Hello everyone. Welcome to MS Apti webcast. In this video, we will see the steps to install the DHCP server role and how to configure DHCP server role in Windows Server 2019. For this demo, I'll be using my domain controller named ws2k19-dc01 that is configured with the IP address 172.18.72.5. And also host the Active Directory domain service role for the mylab.local domain. Before we start the installation of DHCP server role, let's take an overview of DHCP server. Dynamic host configuration protocol means DHCP is a network protocol that used in internet protocol networks. As its name indicates, DHCP is a service that automatically provides TCP IP configuration such as IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server's IP address to the client's computer. So, without wasting time, let's start the DSCP server rule installation first. As you can see, already I have opened SOA Manager console, and now I'm going to click on Manage, select Add Rules and Features. On our domain controller, I have login as a domain admin's credential and the server is also configured with the static IP address. This is the two things that you need to verify before you start the installation of DHCP server rule. Now let's click on next button. We're going to select role base or feature base installation. Let's click on next. Now we have only one server in our server pool and which is our local server. So let's click on next. And now I'm going to select DHCP server rule. Let's select the checkbox. It is going to ask that it also required certain other feature. And in that DHCP server management console will be also there. So let's click on that add features as well. Now I'm going to click on next. Next again. Next again. And click on install button. Okay, as you can see, DHCP server role installation process has been completed successfully. Now we need to complete post installation configuration. And for that, you need to click on this complete DHCP configuration link. By chance, suppose if you have closed this console and if you want to complete the post installation configuration of DHCP, that time you need to click on this yellow explanation mark. And here we have our options for post deployment configuration. To complete that, we need to click on this link as well. Complete DHCP configuration. This is DHCP post install configuration wizard. It is going to create the following security group for the delegation of DHCP server administration in your Active Directory. And that group are DHCP administrators and DHCP users. This is also going to register this DHCP server in our Active Directory as well. That process is also known as the authorization of DHCP server in Active Directory. Let's click on next. On this computer, we have logged in as a mylab slash administrator. That's why we have a sufficient privilege to authorize this DHCP server in our Active Directory. Let's click on commit. Fine, all the groups has been created successfully and our DHCP server is authorized in our Active Directory as well. Let's click on close. And now our first part is completed. In the second part, we need to configure our DHCP server in that at least we need to create one DHCP scope so that our server can provide IP address to our client computer. To manage DHCP server, we need to click on tools and we need to click on DHCP management console. On DHCP management console, your server will be listed there. In our case, it is ws2k19-dc01.mylab.local. Let's expand it. Under, we have a two options, one for IPv4 and the second one is IPv6. I'm going to expand IPv4. And here, we don't have any scope at this time. It is saying us add a scope. Now here, brief overview information is that a scope is a range of IP addresses assigned to computers requesting a dynamic IP address. You must create and configure a scope before dynamic IP address can be assigned to your client computer. To create a new scope, we need to click on action menu and then we need to click on new scope. So for that, you need to click here and then you can create new scope from here. You can also right click on your server name and here 
authorization options will be there. So already this server is authorizing our Active Directory. That's why unauthorized options is there. But if you haven't authorized your DLCP server, so at the time you need to select this box where authorized options will be available. I'm going to create new scope. So for that, I'm going to click on IP version four and let's right click there and select new scope. Let's click on next. And here you need to specify the name of your scope and as well as you can specify the description as well. For this demonstration, I am going to use a scope A. Let's click on next. And here you need to specify the IP address range, which you want to assign to your client computers. For this demonstration, I want to start this range IP address from 172.18.72.100 to 172.18.72.254. My subnet mask will be slash 24. Okay, so subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. Let's click on next. Now here, if you want to exclude any IP address from the scope, you can add that IP address or IP address range over here. We are not going to add any exclusion. Let's click on next button. Here it is asking us about the lease duration. Lease duration is the time period in which client can use the IP address from DHCP server. By default, it is set to eight days, which I'm going to change. It will be a eight hours in our case. You can change this uh, lease time as per your requirement as well. Let's click on next. Now here it is asking us, do you want to configure DHCP options as well? Yes. So for this, you have to select yes. If you don't want to configure DSCP options right now, then you can select no as well. For this demonstration, we want to configure all those options like specifying our default gateways IP address, information about our domain, information about the DNS servers, etc. Let's click on next. Here it is asking us to provide the router's IP address, which is 172.18.72.1 in my case. Let's click on add button. Click on next. And here, as you can see, parent domain name is already there. And as well as my DNS server's IP address is also mentioned there. The reason is pretty simple because we are installing and configuring DSCP server rule on a domain controller. And that's why this information is already there. If you haven't provided this information, for example, let me remove this. Fine. I'm going to uh, remove this as well. And now I'm going to specify the FQDN of my domain controller. Okay, now click on resolve. And as you can see that IP address has been successfully resolved. The reason is there because we have installed and configured DNS server rule on this computer as well. Let's click on add. Fine, let's click on next. If you have any Wins server in your environment, then you can specify the information about your Wins server as well. We're not using any Wins server, thus I'm going to skip this step. Click on next. And uh, do you want to activate this group? Right now, I'm going to select no. I'll activate this group later on. See, before your DSCP can start assigning IP address to your computer, you need to create at least one scope and that scope should be activated. Then after your DSCP server will able to provide IP addresses to your client computer. Let's click on next and I'm going to click on finish button. So now we have a scope. If you expand your scope right now, you can see one down arrow is there that is indicating that we haven't activated our scope as well. If you expand your scope, that time you will see address pool starting from 72.100 to 72.254. Address lease, whatever lease is assigned to your client computer will be visible here. If you have configured any DSCP reservation, that reservation will be available here. And if you click on scope options, those options which we have specified during the creation of DSCP scope will be visible here, like router's address, your DNS server's address, as well as your DNS domain name. Fine.
this is my client computer where we are going to test whether our client computer is able to get IP address from our DHCP server or not. I'm going to open Network Connections Console. And as you can see, no internet access is there. Okay, let's click on Change Adapter Options. Select your adapter, right click on it and select Properties. I'm going to select Internet Protocol version 4 and then I'm going to click on Properties. Right now, as you can see, this client computer Windows 10 is configured with the static IP address. Instead of the static IP address, we want to use DHCP server. So our DHCP server can assign IP address automatically to this client computer. Fine, so I'm going back to our DHCP server because we need to activate our scope as well. So I'm going to right click here and then we here we have options for activate. So I'm going to click on it. And now as you can see that uh, tiny symbol is removed from our scope. And here we have a green checkbox as well under IP4. That means now our DHCP server can assign IP address automatically to client computer. Let's taste that. I'm going to select obtain an IP address automatically as well as we also want to select obtain DNS service address automatically. Let's click on OK button. Click on close. And here we go. Let's click on yes. Let's right click on our adapter and select status. Click on details. And here you can say TCP enabled, yes. And the IP address which our computer have received from DHCP server is 172.18.72.107. Subnet mask is there. And the most important thing is there, lease obtained. You can see the lease is obtained on this time and our lease is going to expire on this time. Our default gateway IP address is there. A DHCP server's IP address is there and the same server is our DNS server. Let's go back to our DHCP server. I'm going to click on address list. Let's right click and select refresh. As you can see, the information is also available about the client's IP address. And the most important thing is that client's MAC address will be also listed here. Let's check that. Here you can see physical address is there. Last digits are 407A3E. Here we go. It is matched with the client's MAC address. Fine. So this is the way how you can install and configure DHCP server role in Windows Server 2019. That concludes our video demonstration. Thank you all for watching this video.